On the phone, we have a gentleman who won a national championship at Colorado. He was also an assistant coach for around 13 years in Michigan. He has something in uh, common with my co-host, Elliot Harris. They both went to Missouri together. Bill McCartney, how you doing, coach? I just lost him. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. I heard click. I'm like, what the? Oh. He didn't keep his... Yellow. Okay. okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Ouch. Mr. McCartney? <laughs> ah. Let me try again. One of those days. Oh, I'm going home after this. <laughs> Hello. Sorry about that. Anytime you're ready. I'm, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, Coach, you and uh, my co-host, Elliot Harris, have something in common. You both went to Missouri for college. (laughs) I didn't know that. Yeah. um, I grew up in the Detroit area, and um, uh, Dan Devine had been at uh, Michigan State, and he got the head coaching job at Missouri, and um, so he went back into Michigan and recruited a little bit. That's how I ended up there. Okay, because mostly it was in-state players that ended up at Missouri, so you were you were the exception. As yeah, I think initially, uh, you know, he went over a broad front, but you're right. Uh, finally, they they were able to really establish themselves in-state. And you were part of one of the great, if not the greatest, Missouri football teams in 1960. I want to know what happened in the game against Kansas. <laughs> you know what A H A B stands for? <laughs> I won't say it over the air. Um, you know, uh, they had Johnny Hadel, Curtis McClinton. They were good. I mean, that wasn't a fluke. No, and they had uh, Bert, we, Bert Cohn also. We, in fairness, uh, you know, we... Um, had come off a victory over Oklahoma where, as you know, back in those days, Missouri did beat Oklahoma very many times, but we crushed them. And so there was a letdown that kept coming off that game, and, and uh, the Jayhawks took advantage of us. Yeah, that 41-19 to 19 victory over Oklahoma, it's, it's like no, nobody did that to Oklahoma, certainly not in, at that time. If one of the uh, great victories, I'm assuming, of, of Devine's career. Yeah, it was, it was amazing, really, because, um, you know, we uh, celebrated like I've never seen a team ever celebrate. I mean, that celebration was, it went on and on and on because it, it was so unexpected. What was the late point for Coach Devine? You know, he was uh, a disciplinarian. He was um, a guy who had a real clear picture of what he wanted. He was very firm and decisive. Um, you know, I my personal experience was him. I never really got close to him. You know, I felt like he was distant. He had a, an assistant by the name of Doug Weaver who came with him from Michigan State, and Weaver was very personable, very gregarious, outgoing, and he helped, uh, I think, um, bridge that gap. Yeah, no, I I think your assessment of Divine is, is spot on. He was more like the CEO who would delegate a lot of stuff yeah. to his exactly. assistants. You know, he, he wasn't all warm and fuzzy. <laughs> That's exactly right. Was there a football highlight for you as a Tiger? Well, you know, I was a linebacker, and uh, uh, the defenses that we played were really well coached. And um, I'm trying to remember who we beat in the Orange Bowl, but it was Navy. 
Yeah, we shut down Joe Bellino. Bellino won the Heisman Trophy. And so he comes into that game. He had already won it going into that game. And so, you know, he had all this uh, uh, support and excitement and energy around him. And c- correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. He had a minus eight yards and 12 carries. Yeah. Well, no. when do you do that to a Heisman Trophy winner? You know? Never. I mean, never. It's unprecedented. It hasn't happened since. So, but that was Weaver. So how do you go from graduating from Missouri, coaching in high school, to be going to join Bo Schembechler's staff? Yeah, you know, um, when I was a high school coach, I'm the only high school coach in the state of Michigan to win the state championship in football and in basketball in the same year. In other words, um, I had a gift. I could coach. Coaching is motivating, challenging, inspiring. That was my strength. That was my talent. I didn't necessarily outsmart anybody, but I was a student of the game. I went up to Michigan and studied their football when Schimbecker got there. And then I went... Um, all the way to Houston, Texas, to study basketball. So I would go great distances to study the the, the really good teachers. And um, the, the, you know, when I was seven years old, I knew I was going to be a coach. How many guys can say that? You know, <laughs> so I I studied my coaches all the way through high school. I had really good coaches, college outstanding leaders, and then when I started doing it, I had a real a grasp of what I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, it was all the way up through, but working for Schimbecker was a highlight because he won more games in a 20 year stretch than any other coach in all of college football. You know, fame can come in a moment, but greatness comes with longevity. You may be able to do it once, but can you do it again? He did it for 20 years. So I had the good fortune to serve under him. What was he like as a boss? He was a strong <laughs> leader. I mean, he was stronger than bait box breath. <laughs> he was strong to the point where um, when he stood in front of the team, he had, he commanded their attention, you know. And as a result, everything rises and falls on leadership. Every home, every business, every church, everything is a direct reflection of the leadership. He was the strongest leader I've ever been around. What was the rivalry right between him and Woody Hayes? <laughs> well, keep in mind, you know, he came from coaching at Ohio State. So he was an assistant there. And um, so when he, you know, have you ever heard the song? It's my favorite song. Oh, how I hate Ohio State. <laughs> well, he brought that song with him. <laughs> you, you could have had a career as a singer. <laughs> when Colorado came calling, was it a difficult decision to leave Ann Arbor? No, not at all. You know, uh, when you when you know when you're seven years old you're going to be a coach and you start climbing that ladder, uh, that was the the great opportunity. Um, you know, it, it was a uh, keep in mind I had played at Missouri, so I I had been to Boulder and I knew something about Colorado and it was a dream job. It was a chance of a lifetime. How long did it take for you to realize that you could make Colorado a successful program? Well, you know, um, those who plan, those who fail to plan, plan to fail. If you have a plan, and I learned the plan from Shim Beckler and others, we just, here, here's, the, here's the long and the short of it, okay? Uh, when I was an assistant coach at the University of Michigan, one year we signed 27 players. So we had nine full-time assistant coaches on the road recruiting. I signed 12 of them. I could recruit. I could go into your living room and talk 
you into sending your son to Michigan? Well, if you could send him to Ann Arbor, I guarantee you could send to Boulder, okay? Because Boulder is amazing compared to most college towns. It's an amazing place, nestled up against the mountains, not far from a major airport in a major city. It's, it's an unbelievable place. That wasn't hard to sell. So I was able to recruit. It was just a matter of time before we had more talent than the other guys. The reason we won is we had more talent. Yeah, no, no question Boulder's a, a beautiful area. And, and for a college campus, it, you know, it's very easy to fall in love. <laughs> well, you know, it's, um, it's a kind of a place where you can have a maximum experience. You can get a good education. It's, 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 it's not Ivy League, but it's, it's next to it. And you can have a great social life. That campus is alive. It's full of energy. There's a lot to do. Kids come from all over the country to go there. And then the football, you get to play against the Oklahomas and the Nebraskas. That was the challenge. And so we would sell the whole college experience. You broke my heart, though, with that national championship game and you beat Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl. <laughs> so growing up, uh, my my whole family were Notre Dame fans. So uh, to, to accomplish that was bigger than life. Did they ever oh. forgive you? <laughs> hey, you know what? Blood's thicker than the Irish stuff. How surprising was it that you got a contract extension after going one in ten? Yeah, um, you know, there's a principle in construction that the higher you want to build, the deeper you have to dig. If you want a skyscraper, you have to lay a real solid foundation. After three years, we had only won seven games, but there wasn't any question we were laying a solid foundation. And the administration could see that. And so they, they gave me four more years. And from that time on, from the time they extended my contract, we never had a losing season. That game, the miracle of Michigan, when Cordell Stewart made that pass to Westbrook, was that a bigger game to win the championship, in your opinion, because you beat your former uh, school, Michigan? <laughs> you mean selfishly. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, I grew up in Michigan and coached in Michigan. To go back there and win like that, I mean, it was very enjoyable, satisfying, rewarding for me personally. But for the program as a whole, that wasn't the biggest moment, you know. Uh, Winning the Notre Dame game was bigger. Speaking of going back and winning at, at a place you'd been, you you won a game against Missouri that involved five downs. <laughs> I, I'm going, who who on the sideline can't count to, to pass okay, four? But, okay, okay, that's all true, but listen to me now. Think with me now. If you had known that it, that it was fourth down, would you have spiked the football? Well, the downs marker showed third down. So, well, actually, uh, it, it showed second down. And so what we said was, because the clock was ticking, we didn't have much time, we said, look, we're going to run it. If we don't score, spike the ball, and then we'll have time to call another play. And so we honestly didn't know what, that the down was actually third down and not second. Or we wouldn't have called what we called. So that's why we never felt guilty about taking that victory. We, we, you know, we would have strategized differently, and we ended up scoring on the next down anyway. But it was close. <laughs> you know, I mean, the official, uh, he could have called that either way. When Bo Becker retired, was there any thought in your mind that you wanted to take that Michigan job? Well, you know, uh, Gary Moeller had been there. He had been captain at Ohio State. He was a real strong leader, and he had been very good to me 
when I was, he was a defensive coordinator and I was his assistant at coach the outside linebackers. And so uh, when, when he got the job, that's what everybody expected. And I, you know, I, I certainly expected that too. Were there opportunities while you were coach at Colorado to go elsewhere? You know, um, probably, but um, when I signed that contract, you know, um, I'm one of those guys that believes that um, if you put your name on there and you sign for four years, then you don't look around. You don't break your word. You don't contradict your word. Now, I'm not saying that at the expense of other people because I know that not everybody believes that. But that's that's what I believe. I believe that, that your word is your vow. And if you give your word, then you don't violate it. You don't break your, your word. So I never looked. M- Missouri could have used you. <laughs> well, of course, you know... I've always be grateful to Missouri because they gave me a scholarship. And during the time that I was there, we had a lot of success. And I thoroughly enjoyed uh, Columbia. And I married a girl from Stevens College. And we were married 50 years. She was, you know, she was amazing. And she's passed away now. And so, you know, I look back on that time at Missouri with only really positive memories. 